what's up? My name is Munchie. I'm a former athlete, just like you or somebody you know, and this is Shooting in the Gym. But before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, or hit that notification button to make sure you get stay up on all future releases of Shooting in the Gym and everything on the Wash Pot. All right, peace. Hey, what's up? My name is Munchie. I'm a former athlete, just like you or somebody you know. This is Shooting in the Gym. Well, not really shooting in the gym, we're shooting outside the gym. And we're going to make a snowball. <laughs> if you as a former athlete could place one sentence on a billboard that represented what you think former athletes should know about being a former athlete based on your time as an athlete, what would it be? Well, for me, I'd probably rework the logos of every major amateur and professional athletic league with specific phrases used in place of their actual names. Something to the tune of NCAA, not chasing athletic admiration. NFL, navigating finding longevity. Or NBA, never believing the acclaim. Or MLB, making longevity beautiful. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because otherwise, what was the point? Sometimes I dream that he is me. Got to see. See, regardless of at what level your label of former is followed by, meaning whether the word that follows former for you is professional, uh, aspiring professional, collegiate, or high school or even earlier, chances are if you're a former athlete at this point like me, you're of an age that there's really no way you did not see that commercial when it was first propagated in the 90s. For some of our younger population of former athletes, this was a time well, well before the internet was the internet we know today. And even before dial up and this PTSD triggering sound for me. This represented the growing popularity of sports figures as larger than life heroes to aspire to be, and not only for current athletes that happen to identify with this, the central pro athlete in this particular commercial. See, even non athletes were sucked into the themes of these commercials. I mean, how could you not be? You making snowballs? See, from commercials to billboards to Wheaties boxes, now right now, please. Yep, that terrible, tasty cereal. About a little one on one. I'm ready. Uh -oh. Now, on this first time ever Wheaties game box, you can shoot hoops with Michael Jordan. Nice shot. Let's be honest. We saw our sports heroes everywhere and anywhere as people that we were above the petty worries of the world. They're capable of all things, in possession of all things the world loved, <laughs> and adored and admired by all for, for all of it. I mean, how could you not want to be a professional athlete? Especially an athlete like Michael Jordan or Tom Brady. I mean, in their respective sports or sporting arenas, these guys are the pinnacle of competitors within their uh, respective sport. They are what people aspire to be. They are what the elite of the elite of the elite athletes aspire to be someday, with really only those two ever becoming that. In terms of the NBA, Michael is arguably number one of the 214 Hall of Famers ever recognized by the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. And similarly, in Canton, Ohio, Though not yet inducted, Tom Brady will stand alone at the top of the Mount Everest of professional football players ever to play in the National Football League, both forever enshrined. But even if these two receive every elite and rare accolade, award, trophy, ring, whatever possible to receive for a professional athlete, there's still one catch. Aha! And this catch is why my billboard would read as one of those described in the intro. June 19th, 1984, 21 years old. And now we are ready for the third pick and the Chicago Bulls who have been drafting very high down through the years and they have the third pick today. The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. The next pick 
goes to the Dallas Mavericks. So Michael Jordan, who right now is in Bloomington getting ready for the upcoming Olympics, and this man is a can't miss. And whether a guard spot or the forward, it's 6'6", 195 pounds, comes out. June 14, 1998, almost 14 years later, 32 years old. Wrong. Uh-uh. Now you see now, you done fucked up, you know that thing. Okay, so I messed up. Michael Jordan was obviously not 32 years old in 1998. 14 years after he was drafted. If I say 21, that means he's 35. I'm an engineer, I can do math, but apparently not on that day. Back to the story. In seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. Michael Jordan now as he gets Brian Russell with a quick crossover. Look at Brian Russell slips. And Michael pulls up and buries the shot to give him a one-point lead. That April 16th, 2003, 40 years old. There's the foul. There's the end. And September 11th, 2009, 46 years old. Welcome to Michael. He's one of his basketball role models, the Hall of Famer known as Skywalker, class of 1996, David Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jordan. Thank you. You might be asking yourself, so wait, what was that catch you were talking about? Well, the catch is just that. The story isn't over. See, today, Michael Jordan is 58 years old. And from the sounds of it, he's still as competitive as ever. And that's the point. Being a little bit different, but I, I, I kind of got into golf uh, mainly because from a competitive standpoint, to me, it is the hardest game to play. Absolutely. Uh, I can always respond to a, an opponent, a defensive guy, offensive guy, whatever, but in golf, it's like playing in a mirror, and you're battling yourself consistently to try to get perfection every swing, every putt. Yeah. For a, a competitive person like me, this is what keeps me sane, you know, because when I walk away from the game of basketball, you know, that was enough to keep my competitive juices working. Absolutely. Now when I'm, I'm not, I don't have that game, this game, and it even drives me crazy then. Now I go fishing in between my golf. <laughs> Even in Michael, Michael's own words, the competition never stops. He just transitioned it to something else a bit more meaningful in terms of what he could learn about himself that the game of basketball, basketball showed him was there. But even MJ, his airness, his rareness, still has something to compete for, something to compete to be. Okay, so what's all this mean, you might be asking? <clears throat> well, let's revisit some of my answers to the initial question about the billboard. I said I'd use the typical professional sports league logos and, and acronyms with reworked phrases used in the place of the league's name. Something to the tune of NCAA, not chasing athletic admiration. NFL, naturally finding longevity. NBA, never becoming aged. MLB, making longevity beautiful. I think I switched up the NBA one, but that's okay. <laughs> because otherwise, what was the point? What was the point of striving to become the competitor you wanted to aspire to be or you thought you wanted to aspire to be like Mike, you got it? <laughs> if in the end you don't walk away like Mike or like Tom, not in the sense of what they're most widely known for, you know, not for the, the Super Bowls or NBA championships, MVPs or Hall of Fame nods, <laughs> not for any of that, for no matter the scenario, no matter the number of people in the crowd, no matter how small the perceived slight or challenge may appear to an outsider, if in the end, you walk away the way you should, the way Mike believes you should walk away, you should still be a competitor. You should still be competing in the same manner that you always had. On the outside with something external, but on the inside, just burning with the fire of your own creation. This is what we mean by don't stop keeping score. <laughs> However that score is kept in your mind. Each day, put another tally mark on your side, your side of the board. <laughs> One point for you, none for 
whoever you choose to call that, that person, place, or thing. Because if the goats of our games are still finding ways to keep themselves going, I think they're telling us, who are we to stop? What I think we as former athletes should take from the highest achievers or whatever sport we chose to play is that these people have accomplished as much as they have because they saw the game, the true game, within the game. These leagues aren't the pinnacle of sport. The sport itself is the pinnacle of sport. The sport puts you in competition with yourself above all others. And we're competitors just as much as they are. See, Michael Jordan played in 1,072 games in his career. Tom Brady played 301 games in his career to date when I wrote this. <laughs> Even if you only include eight players per game that could have spent some time period on the court competing against his airness, that's 8,576 people MJ has competed against. Even with that number, the new MJ that MJ sees each day has always been the newest competitor he's looked forward to. When you add that person in, that's 29,746. And if MJ lives to reach the average life expectancy for most Americans today, he's still got 8,030 people to compete with this in, in his lifetime. As he put it, his toughest competition has always been with the man in the mirror. See, external validation or measurement removed, at the end of the day, the competition is between you yesterday and you today, each day, day in and day out. And it will be so until the day Father Time says the game is over. This is why when asked about the billboard, I choose to reframe the league names as phrases that reflect more of an individual aim. Because regardless of the league, regardless of the sport, regardless of the person, the real point of our times as athletes was to get us ready for the competitor that will continue to stare back at us in the mirror each day of our lives. They sleep when we sleep. <laughs> they're awake when we're awake and whenever we're ready to face the mirror they'll be staring right back at us our times as athletes has put us in a put us a step ahead by making us realize that this is the game being played all along if we pay attention so if you know that don't stop to even score old is dope thanks for shooting in the gym with me well outside the gym when we get back to playing in the snow yeah have fun Thanks for checking out Shooting in the Gym. This is a portion of our podcast segments where we're looking for feedback from you. Yep, you, you, you watching this, checking out. Uh, we need feedback. We can't make this thing or any of this or any of the Watch Pod anything uh, that it should be without feedback from you, former athletes just like us or uh, people that you know that are former athletes. So uh, before you depart, make sure you do two things. One, hit that like button, the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications to make sure you get notified of all future releases of the wash pod especially shooting in the gym but then two go to oldandwashedup.com backslash wash pod the link will be in the description again that's oldandwashedup.com backslash wash pod we will have that link in the description on there you will see some directions to click a widget that we have set up for you to record audio and give us some feedback that could be questions comments uh, hopefully no profanity, <laughs> uh, but getting feedback from you will help us make this better in the future. And our intention is to include any sort of questions, comments, or, or suggestions in future releases on the wash pod. Uh, again, this has been shooting in the gym. Appreciate your time. Looking forward to hearing from you in advance. Peace. Peace. You